Today's study will be taken from numerous books of the Bible, but mostly from the book of Romans chapter 8. This study will help us to realize our position in Christ, how God sees us, and how we should see ourselves. From this study, we will come to understand some new things, and question some of the old things we have learned. It will answer a lot of questions you didn't know you had, and raise a lot of questions due to this new knowledge. So let's get started. Scripture says. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. I wanted to start from this place because it takes us back to the beginning. Has this always been the case, that no one after the flesh can please God? When we go back to the beginning, we see that God made man after flesh on the sixth day, and said this about that. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So, there was a time when the flesh was good, and pleasing to God. This was a time when sin had not entered into the world, and the Holy Spirit was in man, causing the spirit in man to have dominance, over the flesh of man. As a side note, the book of Jubilees tells us that Adam managed to remain without sin, for about 49 years. But once sin, entered into the world, the Holy Spirit left man, leaving the flesh of man, in a dominant position over the spirit of man. The roles were reversed, and from that time until this, no one that is after the flesh, is pleasing to God. That is to say, no human, good or bad, who is made up of flesh, can please God. So, that cute newborn baby, born into flesh, having no sin at birth, is not, and cannot be pleasing to God. Therefore, the flesh itself is sinful, without ever committing an act of sin, and became so in the beginning, after an act of sin. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Okay, so we know that once we believe, the Spirit of God comes to indwell us, unto the day of redemption. And as Scripture says, since the Spirit of God indwells us, then not only is the Spirit in us, but we are also in the Spirit. Now, let's back up and see what having the Spirit in us, in God's eyes has done to us. Scripture says, and if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. So, according to God, if Christ be in you, your body is dead, because of sin. In other words, when Jesus came to live in us, he became the master of our flesh, and rendered it, the flesh, powerless over us, even dead to us. But it is not a symbolic death of the body, but an actual death of the body. Scripture says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless I live. Yet not I but Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Well, if my body is dead, then what is my life in? What am I clothed in as I live on the earth? What have I put on in place of the body? How is my life maintained without a body? Scripture says, For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Therefore, water baptism, representing the death of the body, also represents the putting on of the Spirit of Christ. But water baptism is symbolic for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. For once we believe, we are actually baptized with the Holy Spirit, covered with the Holy Spirit, we are submerged in the Holy Spirit, we are inside the Holy Spirit, and it becomes our body. So, not only is the Holy Spirit in us, but it is also covering us, and we are in it, as it has become our body. Scripture says, For ye are dead, with reference to the body, and your life is hid with Christ in God, 
in reference to the Holy Spirit, our covering, and body. So, as scripture says, But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. This is saying, our life as believers, are hidden in Christ, the Holy Spirit, his body, in place of our bodies, which is dead, until such time as we are born again, to receive our very own bodies. Now, hear what scripture says about you without a sinful body. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Did you hear that? Let me repeat it, it said. He that is dead is freed from sin. In other words, the law of sin and death has no power over you, because you have died out from under it. So, we are freed from the control of sin, due to the death of the body, and now under the law of righteousness, to do good by the faith of Jesus Christ who abides in us. Let me rehash, what has been said, as we have covered a lot. Once we put our faith in Christ, we are forgiven our sins, and the body becomes dead, and Jesus comes to live in us, and also becomes our body, our living body, in place of our dead body. Now I may be wrong, but this says to me, that any sin we commit going forward, from this body, cannot and will not be imputed to us because our body is dead, in the eyes of God. And we are righteous, because the righteous one, abides in us. And we are in his spirit body, therefore, we cannot be credited for sin, because we are no longer under the law of sin and death, but under the law of righteousness to life. Do you remember when Paul said, absent from the body, is present with the Lord? Well, for us, this becomes spiritually true, once you believe. Once you believe, your body dies and your spirit is received by God into his body, and his body becomes your body. So, by the time your body actually dies, your spirit beforehand, has already been received by God, into his body, because of your faith. Now, as long as one remains a sinner, and does not believe in the work Jesus performed on the cross, and his resurrection from the dead, then his sinful body is alive, and sin is credited to him, because he is alive under a law that proves him to be a sinner. But once that body dies, he dies as a sinner, but no more sin can be imputed to him, because he has died out from under the law, and he is freed from any further sin being imputed to him. So, today all Christians are in him, waiting to be born again, with our very own spiritual body, exhibiting his glory, that he will assign to us. Scripture says, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. As you can see in this picture, there are those in Christ who are his, and those who are outside of Christ, who are none of his. It is because we who believe, exist in the world in a spiritual body, his body, which is not under the law of sin and death, while they exist in the world, in a fleshly body, which cannot please God, and is under the law of sin and death. So, all Christians today are in him, and no Christian today, has been born from him, as yet. Have you been born of God? Before you answer, let's see what God says of those, who are born from himself. Scripture says, Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin, because he is born of God. The reality is, that we still sin, even though the body is dead, we walk after it, as though it were still alive. We are in the spirit, which we are learning to follow, and our learning will not be finished, until we come to have our own body, that completes our being, 
and will not allow us to sin. So, no, none of us are born again at this time, but all of us are in the Spirit of God, waiting to be born. And we will be born again, a birth from the Spirit of God, when He comes back, and brings us with Himself, and He will raise up our new bodies, no more flesh but a spiritual body, and we will put it on, and both the body and spirit, will not and cannot sin against God. And then, this saying will be fulfilled. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. We are only born once from God, and it is not when we first believed. When we first believe, we are placed in the body of Christ, and remain there until we are all born again at the same time, and all have the same birthday. So, what have we learned? We learned that when we were not believers, we were in the flesh, and unpleasing to God, and under the law, which repeatedly showed us up to be sinners. And we were without a means of being saved. We learned, that at the death of the body, for both the believer and unbeliever, there is no more imputation of sin, since the body is no longer alive, under the law of sin and death. We learned, that once we believe, we are given a body to replace our now dead body, due to a faith in Christ, and that new body is us being placed in the body of the Spirit of God, and we will remain there until the day of redemption. We learned, that on the day of redemption, the body of God, into which we have been entered, will give birth, and we shall be born again, having our own spiritual bodies, that can never sin against God, and that great day of our birthday will be accomplished, and we shall be the children of God, forevermore. If you would like Jesus to come and live in you, and place you in his body, and on the day of redemption, birth you from his body, to be as bright as the noonday sun. Tell God. I know I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. Tell God. I believe Jesus died for my sins. Tell God. I believe he was dead and buried. And tell God. I believe he was raised on the third day. If your confession is from the heart, then you have been transferred from your body of flesh, which cannot please God, into the Spirit of God, which now is become your body, and you will remain there until the day of resurrection. Thanks for watching. Living Christians, are provided a temporary spiritual body in Christ, because in the eyes of God, our fleshly bodies are dead. We will remain in his spiritual body, until we are born again from it, having our own spiritual bodies, on the day of resurrection. If this study has helped you, please share it with your family and friends, and subscribe and give it a thumbs up. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Amen.